Hello. Hello. Nice Hi, to see you again. Nice to see you too. You decided to come. Yeah. Do another lesson, huh? Before the weekend. Yes. <laughs> oh. Get them out of the way. Oh, we have oh. someone. Oh, who's this? Hello, 1905. Oh, you, you have a daughter. Who is it? Servant. Is it Servant? Is yeah. it? I can't see his name. You oh, now I can see his name. Now I can see his name because the image was enlarged, so I wasn't <laughs> able to see his name. Hi, Servant. How are you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I can say in Irish, Gia Ditch. Gia Ditch. Gia Ditch. And then you reply, Gia is Murditch. Gia is Murditch. And in Japanese, how do you say hello, Heidi? How do you greet? Konnichiwa. It was Japanese, it wasn't Turkish. It was Japanese. Oh, what Turkish? I thought it was Turkish. No, I didn't. Konnichiwa is Japanese, isn't it? Heidi. Is it Heidi? Heidi. Yes, yes, yes. What? Ko konnichiwa. Is that how you say it? Konnichiwa. Yes, yes. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Ah. And what about in Turkish? How do we say in Turkish? How are you? How are you? Merhaba is hello. Merhaba. How, ah. how are you? Nasılsın? Or nasılsın is more formal. Oh wow, that sounds really hard. <laughs> the oh, Turkish. I think I would have problems with Turkish language. I we, uh, with Arabic, I was so impatient. Oh my god, I really, really was. I don't know. It's the pronunciation, the Tajweed in Arabic is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Very difficult, especially Ein. Ein. There's a letter with Ein. Yeah. I just cannot pronounce it properly. So yeah, yeah, Heidi, it's very difficult. Arabic. Yeah. You're still pronouncing it clear, clearly. It's good. Yes. Do you I, like it? Yeah. Yes. This is another room. This is the other room that we have. It's a spare room. And basically, we have a, a built in computer that we hardly use. And now I just decided to use it. So everything is set up. And it's my little computer. This is my room. Alan has his room. So, yeah. I should be touching my computer. It's good, it's good. I like this computer. It's perfect for me. It really is. Morning, Ken. How are you? Ken. Aka Ken. Oh, yes. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. Um, are you good? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, listen, guys, you missed a good game. Boggle. The Boggle oh. game. Yes, oh, I, no. I had to go outside. They sent me to shopping to shop. Oh <laughs> no, really? Oh damn it! Well, look, I'll do it again next week for you guys. Heidi, did you enjoy that game? Give me some yes, feedback. Yeah, it's very fun. Yeah, you want to maybe tell them what it's about a little bit, and then they can maybe get prepared. What's the, what's the game about Heidi? What did you do? If you want to tell Ken and serve it, what did you do in the game? For, yeah, for example, let me see. Microphone's a bit. Hello. 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 Yes, so sorry, Ken. So basically, Heidi has just given an example. She put four letters on the board, on the chat box, and you guys will have a minute or two to find as many words as you possibly can with this, um, with, with these four letters, and you are timed. And whoever gets the most letters, then of course gets the most marks. So yeah. Oh, and it gets okay. harder. Yeah, it gets harder as well. But it's pretty good. It's good for the vocab and it's good for the um, the spelling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll do it next week with you guys and you can try it out. How is that? Cool. Sounds cool. Yeah, it is. It's like Scrabble Servant. It's mm -hmm. like Scrabble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So similar to that. Similar to that. Okay, guys. So listen, let's get started in this um, plan. Okay, we're a bit late. 
So it's okay, it's okay. And I think I'm used to this now. So let me just get my plan up. Okay, guys, so today we're going to be reading about the mass tourism that threatens Venice. And why? Why does it threaten Venice? So we're going to discuss that later. And the warm-up we're going to be doing, okay, in relation to travel. The grammar is models of obligation. Okay, now I've got some good news for you guys. Um, I did speak to my superior, Daniel, yesterday, and I asked him about the new any any new improvements with Kalingo, and he did tell me there are three new features that are going to be implemented into Kalingo. The first one is going to be more grammar skills are going to be employed into Kalingo, and I think that's going to start next week. And then the second thing is um, there's going to be role plays. Awesome. Well, yeah, that's going to be fun, role plays. And we're going to be practicing using the idioms, um, conversation, etc. And then the third one he mentioned, um, we're going to have a bit of debate discussion as well. Um, so we're going to have three new features coming to Kalingo. So that's mm -hmm. going to be very soon. Now the grammar is going to come next week. So, yeah, so it's going to be a bit different. So there you go. It's a bit of good news for you guys. Okay, thought I'd update you guys. I'm sure you guys know already. Oh, about... not, no. <laughs> oh, you it's didn't know? Time. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's a good job I mentioned it then. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, 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 good. Well, listen, well, let's get started with a warm-up, guys. Um, I wanted to ask uh, Heidi. Heidi. What must you do before checking in at an airport? You're going on a long vacation, somewhere nice, somewhere tropical. And yeah. you're at the airport, and mm. there's something that you must do before checking in. What mm. is that? At first, um, our luggage is ah. At first, I need to go to the counter, mm -hmm. airplane counter. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, check my ticket. Yes. And uh, I put my luggage. Uh huh. And uh, uh, go to the gate. I need to through the gate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Any other ideas, Ken? What you would do before checking in? Mm -hmm. Checking hot? You mean a hotel? An um, airport. So you're going airport. on a long flight somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and maybe how can I say English? Departure. Departure gates. Yeah, maybe I need to show a passport or visa kind of thing mm -hmm. at, at that gate, and. I'm checking, you know, body check. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Serve it. Any other ideas what you would do before checking in? I guess I must wait my wait for my turn. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. What about checking um if your luggage is overweight? Or not? That could be another one. Some people they don't actually weigh their luggage at home, so they wait till the last minute, and they're in the queue and they're like, "Oh my god, I forgot to weigh my luggage." Oh no! So you're trying to make sure that there is no um, sprays in your handbag. There is no scissors in your handbag because they have gotten really strict now with the procedures before flying. Now they don't let you carry a hundred, they only let you carry a hundred milliliter perfume in your bag. Yes. Anything mm -hmm. more than a hundred milliliters, they throw it away. Mm -hmm. So it's good to check that. For cologne, anything, any sharp items in your bag, you need to check. Any liquid. So yes, liquid. any liquid it's substances. Liquid. Yeah. Yeah, even water, guys. You're not even allowed yeah. to take water on. You have right. to buy water at the gates. So, that's, <laughs> yeah, they're going to throw yeah. it away. Can you imagine that? Yeah, so, I, I have to lift uh, my 
my soft drink beverage, I uh, actually tea, a mm -hmm. pet bottle of tea to enter the American consulate office. Yeah. Very strict. <laughs> very strict. You know, in Australia, guys, they're worse. They are worse. In Australia, you have to declare a lot of them. Um, if you have wood, like a wooden frame, for example, and you wanted to um, go to Australia with this present of wood, you have to declare it. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell them that you're bringing this in. If you don't, you have to pay a fine, and that fine involves a $30,000 fine because they're very strict with taking in new sources from another country. Even rugs, even rugs and mats, they don't let you take it in. Yeah, because they're scared of any insects that are, you know, accumulated in the rugs or mats. Yeah, so they're quite strict. So that's another thing to think of before checking in. Okay, guys, so let's move on to the pronunciation. I'm sure you guys are a big pro on the pronunciation. So, guys, the two vowel sounds we're going to talk about today is a, e, a, e. And they sound very similar. So set your chin on something solid, like a table, a cell phone, or your hand, like me. Okay. What is the difference when you say had to and head to? So guys, just put your hand, okay, set your chin on your hand like this. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Now I want you to pronounce after me. Had to. Had to. Had to. Had to. Had to. Okay. Had to. Had to. Had to. Had to. Had to. So, do you guys notice a difference between the two with your chin? Had Yes. You open, hmm. you open our chin a lot when we say had to. Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. So, your jaw opens wider when you say had to, had to. But with head, head to, the jaw does not open slightly. It's still slightly closed. Okay? Okay, so there are three main differences between these two vowels. Okay? The jaw drops more with had to. The sides of your tongue usually touch the back of your teeth when you say had to, had to. Your cheeks and your tongue are quite tight when you say had to, had to, okay? So try pronouncing these sentences, okay, with using the hand on the chin if you want an extra direction. Let me copy and paste this for you guys. Uh, right. So the first one. Um, you want to have a go. So, Servant, you want to try with the first one? The first sentence? Yes, sir, the... I never spaced them out. I'm very sorry. I should have spaced them out. Yeah, the first sentence. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to go out for lunch, but I had to save my money. Excellent. Yeah. You want to try the next one? I'm going to head to work today. Now, not today. Yeah. Okay. You want to try the other one as well? Okay. If you had to head to a certain vacation spot, where would you go? Frankie had a bad bed, so he headed to best store because he had to buy a new one. Very good. Excellent. Okay, Ken, you want to try the sentences? Okay. I wanted to go out for lunch, but I have to. Had to. Uh, but, had to. I, but I had to save my money. Okay, keep going. I'm going to head to work now. If okay, you there, had shouldn't be, sorry, there shouldn't be a two there. Sorry, guys. It's part of the lesson. Should, mistake there. Okay, keep going. Okay. I wanna, uh, I'm, I'm going to head to work now. Uh, if you want, if you had to, had to head head to <laughs> a certain vacation spot. Free time, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Keep going. Where would you go? 
Frankie had to a bad bed, so he headed to the bed store because he had to buy a new one. Very good, excellent. So that mistake there with two guys, just exclude that from the sentence, okay? Heidi, your yeah. turn. You try. I wanted to go out for lunch, but I had to save my money. I'm gonna head to work now. If you had to head to a certain vacation spot, where would you go? Frankie had a bed, bad bed, so he uh, he head okay. So he headed to the bed store uh, because he had to buy a new new one. Very good, excellent, guys. So you guys know the difference between the two, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. All good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the grammar, guys. Okay. Um, let me just screen share this for you. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Okay, guys. So I'll make it a bit bigger for Ken, of course. Okay. Okay, guys. So yeah, is that okay for you, Ken? Yes. Okay. Thank good. You. Okay. No, oh, excellent. No problem. So today we're going to learn about the models of obligation, guys. Okay. So first, there are many types of model verbs. For this lesson, we will talk about ones used for obligation. So models are used to express the mood of a verb, such as ability, possibility, and other conditions. You do not conjugate model verbs, and they cannot be used without a main verb. The most common models of obligation are have to, must and should. Models of obligation are used for commitments you make due to work, school, family, goals you make for yourself and other factors. Okay, must is used for strong personal obligations. So the construction we use must plus plus verb. So survey, can you read the two examples? I must using must. Do, I must do this before it is too late. I must stop her. I must help her. Okay. Can you think of another sentence with using must? I must finish that book soon. Okay. Mm hmm Very good. Okay. Ken, can you think of a sentence with must? Mm -hmm. uh, you must uh, be on time. Okay. Uh -huh. Very good. And Heidi? I must reach at the station until 9 a.m. Uh, can you repeat that again? Sorry, Heidi. You must? I must reach at the, at the I must reach at the station until nine AM. Until nine AM. I must reach Okay, okay, that's okay. Okay. Um right, let's move on to the next part, guys. Many of the obligations come from outside factors and are based on the person's opinion. So for example, Heidi, can you read the two examples here? I must take care of my well, my mom uh, since <laughs> she is sick. Today I must finish my t uh, my term paper. Very good. So must is also used for everyday situations where there is something important that happens which requires immediate action. So for example, can can you read the two examples, please? Can. Are you there? Can, is Ken there? Yeah, he is. Oh, he wrote BRB. Oh, is that what he said? Because you know I have the computer. I don't have the two monitors, so it's difficult for me to, you know, navigate between the two screens. Okay, and um, who wants to have a go at reading? Me. Okay, server, you have a go. Uh, My father. My father is in the hospital. I must go there right now. 
I must finish the project today. Okay, thank you. You can use it in the negative form as well, guys, um, such as you mustn't cheat on your test. She must not drive over the speed limit. Okay. And let's talk about have to. So have to is often used for responsibilities, including daily responsibilities and situations in the workplace. So we have the construction, have to, plus verb infinitive. So the two examples, Heidi, can you read for us, please? I have to wake up early every morning, every day, I'm sorry. I have to sell more cars. Okay. So can you think, Heidi, of another sentence, what you have to do? I have to go to the supermarket later. Okay, very good. Seraphit, what do you have to do later on? I I have to close one of the windows because you know when you have two windows open mm -hmm. the air goes so fast from one to another that you feel like home is going to fly. Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Very good. Does it have a name when, when two windows um, is open? I, don't, I can't think of a name when they have the two windows that are open. Well, maybe you can say two windows open simultaneously, maybe. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can maybe use that. They're open together at the same time, so two windows open simultaneously. Maybe you can use that word, maybe. Okay. Okay, let's try the next one. Responsibilities and daily responsibilities. I have to catch the train at 9 a.m. She has to work late today. It can be used to express necessity. So they have to get there early to get a seat. He has to bring a lot of water when he goes hiking. You can use it in the negative form as well. It means that something is not required, but you can do it if you like. It's up to you. This is very different than the negative of must not. So the construction is do not, don't, plus have to, plus verb. Hmm. So the two examples here, you do not have to go to the party. We don't have to finish the report on time. Okay. Okay, so let's next one. There is no past form of must. We use had to for both must and have to and did not have to to express obligations in the past. So the first two examples, she had to finish her work before she left. They did not have to take the exam again. Right, should is used for mild responsibilities and giving advice. You should exercise more often. She should date someone else. Can anyone think of maybe a should with using Kalingo? Mm -hmm. What people should do with Kalingo? Mm -hmm. The crew of students, correct. Okay. What do you think um, should? Make, can you make a sentence with should? What people should do? in regards to Kalingo or maybe anything else. The crew <laughs> should invite the best student to America. Yeah. Okay, yeah, very good. Mm. Okay, Heidi, can? Uh, student uh, should, to, uh, should to have internet access. Should have internet access, yes. Very, very important, yes. Heidi, what about you? Uh, student take lessons as many as they can. <laughs> <laughs> like you, Heidi. <laughs> student should take, I think Heidi, I don't know. Heidi, how many lessons did you do last week? Last week, I don't know. <laughs> you done like how many in one day, guys? You should hear how many Heidi had done. I think, uh, what, maybe, you done six or seven? Yeah, five or six. Oh, my God. Guys, have you ever done that amount of hours with Kalingo? How much? How many? Six, six hours. Oh, six hours is my usual uh, routine. Really? Yeah. With Kalingo? Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> same, same. Oh same my God! <laughs> How do you guys have time? Oh my God! <laughs> actually, I like uh, studying English, attending class. Actually. Yeah. I yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh, that's good. It's good that you enjoy it. You're very persistent. Mm -hmm. But six hours, I have to give it to you guys. You're very, very dedicated. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> I'm gobsmacked. I'm really shocked <laughs> that people would actually do that amount of hours. Well, that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. Okay. Okay, so we should. We can use it in the negative form as well. Okay, so should not. Short form of should not is shouldn't plus verb. So the two examples here, you shouldn't talk to her about last night. Jack shouldn't work so many hours. The past form is should have and should not have. Note that the verb is in the past participle. They shouldn't have gone without her. He should have hired John. Okay. Can you guys think of a negative form of using should? Mm. Students, what they should not do. It can be within the university, college, Kalingo, class, up to you. Students shouldn't go to class without pen and paper, for mm -hmm. example. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Uh, people shouldn't ask me about uh, my uh, personal information. <laughs> yes, <laughs> or they'll get a slap, yeah. <laughs> anyone else? Okay, Ken, what about you? Mm. What do you think? Students have not... Uh, uh, have not... Uh, shouldn't have... Uh, shouldn't have... Uh, talked during lecture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or sh shouldn't, yeah, okay. Shouldn't talk during the lecture, shouldn't talk. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't talk, yes. Yeah, shouldn't talk. Okay, very good, guys. Excellent. Okay. So, this article, guys, um, I'll ask you guys maybe to read a little bit today as well. Okay. Let me just uh, screen share the article. Mm. Um, can you guys see it now? No? Mm, no. Hello? No, not yet. Hello, Heidi. Okay, let me um, screen share this article again. Are you singing? Okay. Not, when you say hello, Heidi, it's not like you are singing. Yeah, no, I'm singing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do you know, you do know? You know what I think? Really? I know, I'm dying to have... Well, you know what, Seraphat, I was saying to Heidi, you know when we're playing that game Boggle, we should have a bit of a background music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it's a bit of a, you know, I don't know, it gives you motivation in a way. Maybe have a bit of background music while you're thinking of words. <laughs> <laughs> I might do this next week, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Some people might not be able to concentrate, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how's this, guys? Now you can see it okay? I uh, know. <laughs> make it a bit wow. bigger? Yeah. Of course, Ken, I'm going to make it bigger. I'll make it bigger. Oh, it's okay. Hang on. Okay. How's that now? Is that okay? Uh, still, text is a bit still? big, okay. so still small. I know. It's, I don't know. Hang on. Okay, how's that one? Now, this picture, I hate when we have these pictures. Go away. Okay, okay, let me. Okay. I think this should be okay, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, guys? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, who wants to read first? So, the first, before we start reading, um, the article is called Mass Tourism Threatens Venice. Okay, um, so we're going to know why. Why does it threaten Venice? What effects does it do to Venice? Okay, so who wants to start reading? Me. Yes, Servet. Okay. So you want to read from Venice to tourists? Okay, you're okay reading that part? Okay. Excellent. Okay. Venice, one of the world's most beautiful cities, is facing environmental disaster. Italy, Nostra, 
an environmental organization says that Venice can handle about 30,000 tourists every day, far less than the 60,000 that come to the lagoon city now. It suggests that Venice attracts fever, but richer tourists intend aiming at all kinds of tourists. Okay. on guys yeah you know this computer server I don't know if you know about this but I haven't used this computer for like I don't know three months even more and um, does this affect the performance of the computer no you know it's just going very slow no well, it might you might be used to other computer so this mm -hmm. might look a little bit so yeah slower maybe mm -hmm. this way yeah, it's quite slow sometimes. Like it takes mm. time to think, you know. Okay, well I hope it doesn't freeze on me. You know, the okay, guys. Uses so much CPU power in Google mm -hmm. Hangouts, so maybe it might be the problem. Mm. A camera well, when as I well. was using, yeah, but you know when I was using the other computer. Um, with the two monitors, it has no problem. I think maybe because it's higher CPU, I'm not sure. Yeah. It probably does. Yeah, kind so this, of. Yeah, this is. Yeah, so computer. I just hope. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a bigger computer. And of course, Alan, he really maintains that computer very well. So, <laughs> this is another reason. Okay, guys, very good uh, survey. Thank you for reading. Um, who wants to have a go reading next? Yes. Heidi, okay. Venice is threatened by rising sea levels and Mediterranean sea storms. In the next hundred years, the sea level of Venice Lagoon is expected to rise by 20 inches, about 50 centimeters. Uh, old buildings, churches, and cultural sites are in danger of collapsing. Okay. Ken, you want to read? Thank you, Heidi. You want okay. to read, Ken? Yes. Every year, autumn and uh, winter storms flood much of the city, especially places places where tourists like to go, like Piazza San Mar Marco, the central square of Venice. The situation has become worse because of the giant cruise ships that uh, sail into the city. Waves push up mud and sand which erode wooden piles on which the buildings stand. Very good. Thank you, Ken. Okay, yes. so the yes. Italian yes. government... Yes, Ken, uh, Heidi, what's wrong? Sorry? Piazza San Marco. The name. Sorry. Sorry again? Oh, oh, Piazza San Marco. Yeah, Piazza San Marco. Piazza San Marco. Yeah, that's fine. Is it you wanted to know the pronunciation of that? Yes, <laughs> Italian pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, that's very yeah, Piazza San Marco. I love that name. It's very nice that name. Have any of you guys been to Venice? Yeah. No. You've been, Heidi? Yeah, three times. Oh, three times! My God. <laughs> I've seen you. <laughs> you have been to more countries than me. It's not fair. So sad. What about you, Sarah? Did you go to Venice before? No. No. Yeah, I'd like to go one day. I really would like to go. Um, it's meant to be a very, very beautiful place to go. You know, for just somewhere to relax and wind. You know, it's meant okay. to be a very nice place. Okay, so let's read the next part, guys. Um. Okay, so I'll wait, I'll give you guys a break. <laughs> the Italian government has started building a flood barrier that is supposed to keep out the water from Adriatic Sea. By 2014, three giant steel gates will control the flow of water to and from the lagoon. Environmentalists fear that such a barrier will affect the natural life of the lagoon, mm. which has a mixture of salt and fresh water. Venice's lagoon is a home of plants that release additional oxygen into the sea. Without such plants, water coming from the Adriatic Sea would make the lagoon saltier. Okay, interesting. 
New construction projects pose another threat to Venice. The government is planning an underwater subway connecting Venice with a new town on the mainland. Environmentalists say that this would be a disaster from which Venice would never recover. Okay. Interesting, guys, about Venice. What do you think of that article? Yeah. So, actually, you know, Venice... Ha yeah, go on, Ken, sorry. Uh, yeah. A similar problem happened in my city. You know, city plan to uh, make a reclaim land but uh, that reclaim dam used to be a kind of a lagoon so mm -hmm. some people are, you know opposed to that plan because it might damage to the migrant birds you know it's a lot of migrant birds came to rest in that lagoon but uh, if uh, so reclaim, if the reclaim land you know appeared uh, was made uh, you know migrant bird couldn't go that wow. lagoon cannot go that lagoon and now Island, that kind of, it's called Island City, <laughs> was mm -hmm. made. And inside Island City, kind of artificial lagoon uh, in the park. But it's small, actually. I don't know <laughs> that small lagoon is effective to preserve migrant birds there. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Um, yes, you had a similar problem as well then. Um, so Heidi, what about you? Did you have any problems up your area? Heidi? My area? My area? Uh, I'm living in the inland, so... Yes, so you're, uh, so you're not by the, the coast, so you're okay then. I remember you saying that actually. Okay. Serve it, what about you? Last year, I heard about the flood barrier in uh, Venice. Mm -hmm. uh, they are constructing the, that barrier. But uh, that place always uh, the very big ship um, mm -hmm. back and forth. So usually, that flood barrier is uh, the, um, in the sea, the mm -hmm. seabed. Mm -hmm. But then when uh, the sea level is getting higher, it stands up, then stops up uh, the sea. Oh, okay. Yeah, the flood barrier is supposed to keep the water out. Yeah, it's meant to be a good thing. Thank God they've started building that. They've started yeah. building it, you know. The, the construction budget is very expensive. They are gathering the donations from the world. Do you know how much it is, roughly? I don't know. I forgot the number. It's probably a lot of money. Mm. Probably a lot of euros. Who knows? Okay, so what about you guys? What do you worry about um, in your country when it comes to tourists? What do you worry about mostly? What do you think threatens your country in terms of the uh, environment? Natural disaster definitely is a kind of problem because earthquake, typhoon often hit, mm -hmm. and yeah. And people realize the tsunami after, mm. the, after the, you know, huge earthquake. I know, yeah. that was really bad to hear, wasn't it? That's mm -hmm. really, really bad. Yeah, that's a big problem with Japan. They have a lot of uh, history of these natural disasters. Yeah. I hope, and yeah. We have a lot of disputed islands uh, between uh, South Korea and between China, between Russia. <laughs> mm. Like, has the government, you know, sat down and thought of any um, solutions to prevent this? Uh, it's very difficult. <laughs> yeah, God, yeah. Well, the Italian government have decided to do this flood barrier. So what about you, Servet, in Turkey? Do you have any, pro like, any worries about what Turkey might face? No, I don't know. I pro we don't have any worries, I guess, at this I don't have. Do you have maybe any problems in the future that might arise that you might get worried about? No, yes. In terms of natural disaster, some people are expecting earthquake, an earthquake. Oh. But it's not really something certain or. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen and it will have a mm -hmm. big effect. We don't know. It's natural. It's yeah, you know, we, 
Yes, yeah, someone is saying that as well about the UK. They're predicting maybe a little mini earthquake in the UK, but the UK has never ever had this before in the, in the lifetime. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they're worried about the floods as well because we did have bad floods um, last year. I think it rained for maybe three weeks non-stop. It rained for three weeks. Oh. Never stopped, mm -hmm. and there was just a big uh, catastrophe of just so much water everywhere. You could not get anywhere. There wasn't any work. There was no school for three weeks. We were stuck indoors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was very difficult. It really was. So oh. they're predicting another flood maybe next year. So I don't know. Let's see. I hope it's not going to be as bad as last year. But yeah. So we have to be, you know, aware of these things, guys, right, when it comes to natural disasters. Okay, guys, so let's move on to the uh, discussion questions. Before we move on, does anyone have any questions in regards to the article? Any questions, guys? No? We're all okay? 100%? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, my lesson plan. I want to move you. Okay. All right. Get this up. It's very slow, this computer, guys. I don't know. I'm troll with it. Okay. So, guys, how can Venice attract tourists again? So, what do you think? How can Venice attract tourists again? What do they need to do to attract more tourists? Because obviously tourists are getting scared about the fact that maybe, you know, the flood might happen and you know, they're kind of weary. They might step aside and go somewhere else. What do you think Venice can do to attract? Before um, uh, I was running Italian and Japanese Italian school, that time a teacher came from Venice. She said when she was a child, the what uh, sometimes she had a uh, they call it aqua alta, so what high water uh, came mm -hmm. from the uh, ankle level, but mm -hmm. uh, the next time they need to needed to use uh, boots rain boots, mm -hmm. now like fisherman long boots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like Venice is sinking. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, yes, uh, sinking. Mm. Yeah, I just hope that doesn't happen. God. Mm. So, like, if you can possibly use maybe an, a model of obligation to suggest what Venice can do to improve the tourism again. Anyone have any ideas? I don't think they need to do anything because it's already said that they receive more tourist, tourists than Lagoon can handle. Mm -hmm. So the only thing they need to do is maybe they should make precautions and make, no, not precautions, they should predict the possible problems and take precautions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. keep this way. It's already so popular, and I don't think this. Uh, all the say that like, you know it says hundreds of years. It won't affect the city in a few days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't uh, influence the tourism. Mm -hmm. For now, at least. Maybe yeah, after for years. now. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully they're going to have this flood barrier so this can prevent any arise of any problems. Very good. Thank you for that suggestion, um, Servet. Okay, what about the next one? How can Venice prevent environmental disasters? So it's in the article. And if you guys can remember from the article what they are doing to prevent this disaster from happening. Anyone remember? Flood barrier. Yes. Uh huh. So maybe using 
an obligation there, models mm -hmm. of obligation to support your answer. And maybe Venice can use a technique which Holland use, uses. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, most I heard most of the land of Holland is under water level, under sea level. So mm -hmm. they maybe they know <laughs> some technique to prevent water from the sea, from the ocean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so would it be would it be should or have to? What would you use? I think should too because it's not obligation actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the problem is that it's a very big port, so yeah. many big ship, uh, ships uh, back and forth every day. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I see. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Okay. What about the next one? Can we rely on the changes to Venice to prevent any disasters happening? So can we rely on this flood barrier to prevent no. any disasters? <laughs> In my opinion, no, because uh, you know, after the tsunami hit the coastal area, actually uh -huh. some areas had already built a very high you know, barrier for tsunami. But the really? tsunami was over that fence or destroyed <gasps> that barrier. Oh so sometimes the power of nature is extraordinary, beyond it, our imagination. It's yeah, the force, it's the force of the water, just, mm. you know what that, I mean? That, that place, she is very quiet, not so uh, mm. um, Not that, uh, uh, yeah, it's not, I'm yeah, not it's not. Mm -hmm. so much that place. <laughs> So I, mm -hmm. it's flood water, a flood barrier is a very good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like Ken did say, so yeah, so Ken, they actually took mm -hmm. precautions in order to prevent this. Um, they knew that it was coming, and they actually built a high range, but obviously, mm -hmm. it backfired on them. And I suppose you cannot really fight the natural disaster, so mm -hmm. it's. It's too strong, way too strong. Mm. Yeah. Um, high high level of water is uh, very rare. Twice, maybe once or twice a year. Mm. Mm. Every almost every day they have some high water, but it's uh, quite low. Mm -hmm. So maybe if they have uh, high level of water, they should have notifications to the on on the internet or somewhere. Yes. Yeah, that's true. They can do that as well. Yeah, Heidi. Mm. That's a good point with should, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's try another one, guys. How can you encourage tourism to stay strong in your country? In your country. Now, I'm going to ask individually. So, we'll start with Servet. What about you? How can you encourage tourism to stay strong in your country? I know Turkey, the tourism is... Uh, maximum, it's quite popular. A lot of people like to go to Turkey. Um, so, how can you maintain this? First of all, I guess you need to improve the life standards in the cities and also public services. When tourists come to here, they won't want to see traffic jam or I don't know some little basic problems mm -hmm. stemming from being unorganized mm -hmm. they will want to see an organized and reliable trustable city they, mm -hmm. they won't want to be deceived by sellers salesmen etc so these little things should be solved should be sold on the other hand, advertising is also very important. You see, when I look for uh, some places in Turkey, I can't find any good pictures. But when I look up for other places, I found really beautiful pictures. So maybe in reality, maybe they are less beautiful. Maybe just photography tricks. Mm. But they represent the country as well. In, right, Turkey, you see like Grand Bazaar, if you think. But yes, I remember. Yeah, you saying that to me that the picture, you know, 
didn't do them justice. You know, they could have picked a, a better picture. Yeah, I there, there are really a lot of things to see, but they don't represent it. Mm. They say taking photography is forbidden. Okay, it's forbidden, but how will you uh, advertise yeah, that's your country? True. Mm -hmm. They think like if you put photographies, maybe they will look at the photographs and they won't come. What? Um, maybe photographs. Sorry, no. I don't know. Maybe this is that's what I think. What do you think? Oh, well, that's uh, that's a bit silly. If the, you know, if it is true, that's a bit silly. You know, absurd. Yeah. You know, because this is how you're gonna promote tourism by showing yeah. them the best pictures. You know, photographs. They have to be mm -hmm. deceiving. And then, you know, they can actually see the real thing. So it's silly, definitely. So you would say to encourage probably they should take more pictures, realistic pictures, and improve their photographs there. Yeah, do advertising. I don't know, do something. Just. Yeah. It's important, definitely. Photographs are very important. Okay, Ken and Heidi, mm -hmm. what about you? So you're both in Japan. So we'll start with Ken. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What can you do to encourage tourism for Japan mm -hmm. or maintain the tourism to be yes, great and, still? Uh, yeah, yes, maybe the own pictures that the site is in sports, you know. In this, uh, you know, SNS era, social network era, I think it's effective. You know, mm -hmm. like music video, music clips, video mm -hmm. clips, you know. Yes. At the, at the beginning, uh, the musicians try to you know, protect uh, their copyright on YouTube, but uh, gradually they notice it, it it can be a good promotion for their music. Mm -hmm. So, actually, it's different quality, actually. The professional photographer can take a very excellent, perfect photo, but ordinary people picture is more real, sometimes more real than professional photographer, or, or mm -hmm. kind of or if my friend went been to Venice and he is, uh, he or she posted the picture on Facebook, it can be the one trigger for going to mm. Venice. I think it's, yeah. that's a good idea. Okay, very good. Yeah, that is also a good idea. Mm -hmm. Heidi, do you have another? Yeah, in tip? Japan, transportation fee is very expensive. Mm. When I went to Paris, um, only foreigner c could buy one day ticket or one week ticket. And when I bought uh, bought that ticket, I can uh, take any transportation. So it was very convenient and cheap. So mm. even in Japan, uh, should do, or do the same things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so Japan is the transport very expensive. Yes. yes. Yeah. Really? Why is it so expensive? What is? Mm. I don't know why it shouldn't yeah. be so expensive. Yeah. So people, they usually, how do they get to A and B? They walk or get the bus. Mm. What about driving? Is driving common in Japan? Mm. In local area, yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So people usually what? How do they travel? If the train is expensive, how do you? Do they get the bus then, or? A bus is the cheapest, I guess. The mm. And highway is uh, toll, not toll, uh, toll free, so we have to pay for that. So oh driving God. is expensive, mm -hmm. sometimes more, more than train or planes. Wow. By using highways, I mean. So is it probably cheaper to drive then? Just get your own car and just drive and just spend on petrol? Mm. Maybe? Or is it too busy then to drive? Mm. I maybe if maybe the car obviously the cars are expensive there I'm assuming I don't know yeah and, the and the gasoline is very expensive so maybe uh, public transportation is better I think. is better yeah so that can be improved then the transportation survey sorry did you want to say something survey about Japan no you know, they had Toyota Toyota is producing a lot of cars it's so popular in Turkey. Mm. So I don't think it, it is expensive because you know it's a local car and they have advantages over foreign cars in terms of yeah. taxes. That's yeah, true. Yeah, pretty good. I like Toyota. <laughs> I love Toyota as well. I had a Toyota Yaris in Australia, 
a mm -hmm. silver one. It was the best car ever. It basically ran on air. I wouldn't <laughs> even have to put any petrol in. Maybe once a week, I would put maybe, I don't know, let's see, $20 a week on petrol. It was amazing. Wow, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. no, it's so cheap. Yeah, petrol here is maybe two times higher than cost. Oh my God! Oh, that's week. Well, too yeah. much. I am. Um, yeah. Maybe. 40, How much is it? How much dollar? Uh, one. Uh, five. One dollar. Uh, fifty cents. Per a liter. Oh, it's just per crazy. liter. Yeah, per a liter. That's the current price uh, for petrol. It's so cheap here. <laughs> <laughs> it is three dollars one liter. Wow. Three that. Oh. Three dollars. <laughs> Yes, I think that Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, they are all our neighbors, and you, I don't know. They and say they say Dubai is very cheap for the petrol, yeah. very very cheap. In Arab countries, petrol is cheaper than water. Yeah, that's mm. true. That's so true, Survey. <laughs> they say that. <laughs> that, that's a that's yeah. a good way of describing it. Of course, they have their their resources, so they don't need to, you know, pump up the the petrol price, do they? But yeah, well, that's that's good. That's a good um, way of describing Toyota. I just it's a good car to have, definitely. I will recommend it to anybody if they want to get a car, get Toyota or Honda. Honda as well is good. Honda. So it's a Japanese version as well. Okay, guys. So let's quickly move on to the assessment. Oh my God, it's nine o'clock. Well, at least I don't have to rush because <laughs> Alan doesn't have to come into the room now. It's my computer. I can stay as long as I want. <laughs> okay, so, so let's quickly do the assessment, guys. So maybe you want to join Alan's class. Okay, hang on two seconds. Um, okay, so students, you're going to make a sentence, my students, with a true model. So I will give you the model of should. So, Ken, your mm -hmm. turn. If you can okay. make a sentence with should. Mm -hmm. uh, public transportation should be cheaper. Mm -hmm. Very good, yeah. Okay, survey? survey. Uh, full prices should be declined. Oh, yeah. <laughs> declined. Fuel prices should be declined. Is that what you mean? Declined? Like to decrease, is it? Is it, it declined is different. Declined is more like rejected. Yeah, so you probably say reduced. Okay. Yeah, or decreased, you can say, in price. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, for example, if I can give you declined, you know, if you go to a shop and use your credit card. Mm -hmm. And of course, you don't have your money in your credit card, so the machine displays it as declined. Your card has been declined. Mm, yes. So that has happened to me many of times. Oh my God! Very embarrassing. You do not want to be in that position where your card gets declined. Never have a credit card. <laughs> okay, Heidi, um, can you make a sentence with should? Okay, uh, you should go to bed earlier if you want to wake up early, early morning. You should go to bed early if you want to wake up early in the morning. Yeah, very good. What about um, see the doctor? See the doctor. So serve it, see the doctor. You shouldn't see the doctors. Okay, but can you be a bit la elaborate there, servant, please? You should see the doctor if, if. You should see the doctors in order to have your what? I shall give you a minute. I'll give you a minute to think of that one. I'll give you a minute. Um, can. Mm -hmm. Um I will give you uh the tutor. The tutor. Tutor. Mm. Mm. Uh tutor should teach uh in the classroom. Okay. Yeah. Heidi, I will give you um dentist. Dentist. 
um, dentist should be uh, treat me uh, kindly. <laughs> dentist should treat you kindly. Of course, they should. Yep, very good. Okay, servant. Mother. Yes, people not only should see the doctors but also be the doctor of themselves. Okay, okay, very good profession, a doctor. Okay, last one, guys. I want you to make a sentence with have to. Okay, have to. So if we can start with Heidi, okay? Yeah. What do you have to do? Hmm. I have to study English more. Okay. Can? Mm -hmm. uh, I have to uh, prepare for uh, for dinner. <laughs> okay. Tonight. Okay. Tonight. Yes, tonight. Um, survey? I have to have some more money in my bank account. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do, servant. We all wish to have some money in our bank account. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. So very, very good. You all done well in your assessment. Just a um a bit of a tip. So when you're maybe given a, an example, it's good to give a reason why. So always be elaborate in your answering. Okay. Like because, if, etc. Okay, so the next lesson I will probably want a bit of a longer sentence, okay, um, because I think you guys are used to models of obligation now, so I'm going to make it a bit harder in the next lesson. It's just to, you know, give you more of a challenge and to, you know, get your extra vocab in there, all right? Okay, guys, so listen, time to wrap up. It's like six minutes past six, past nine, oh. excuse me, so yeah. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson, and it's Friday, yes. and it's time to relax, but I'm working on Saturday. Yeah, I've decided mm. to take two classes on, on a Saturday. So um, if you guys want to join me, I am at 7 o'clock at night, 7 p.m., and 8 p.m., so if you guys want to join, you're more than welcome. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so you'll see me on Saturday. I need more ex I need more hours. I need to save more money. So yeah. Okay, guys. So listen, hope you have a good weekend. Take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you either Saturday or Monday. There's my kitten. Oh, oh okay. look, that's coming. <laughs> say hello. Say goodbye. Say goodbye, kitten. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.